Good morning, Friday, last day of the week. Um, it is 6.47 in the morning. Uh, so just to have a run through some markets. Stock markets have obviously been a lot of fun this week. We have been selling them when they hit resistance levels and that certainly has been working. Nice little trade up there in the S&P. And also we were buying the S&P down at 40, uh, 4505, 0. So that's worked. Right, now the FIB levels, uh, I, as you know, I'm relying a lot on FIB levels at the moment because we're trending, so, so that works quite well. First resistance, I actually had this as a target more than the resistance level yesterday, so I obviously should have had it as a resistance level. 45.90 was the target once we broke above this resistance, which had held so well at around 45.55. So these are the levels for the day. Um, look, well, clearly this is a resistance level that is holding, so it might well hold again today around 45.90, 45.95. Um, as I say, we are in a short-term bear trend in the S&P. Uh, and I think we can can go, well, I think we can retest 45.00, certainly. Now, if we get a double bottom there, then that might trigger more something more in terms of a recovery. So I think probably worth trying along down there and seeing if we do get a double bottom. Uh, NASDAQ, the outlook's a bit more negative now. NASDAQ's held up way better than the S&P and, and particularly the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones has really had quite a significant slide. But... Um, that could all be about to change because we've got the head and shoulders pattern, as you know, uh, the, the left shoulder there, the head, and then the right shoulder here. Um, now, this is typical of a head and shoulders pattern, break lower and then retest the neckline. And the neckline is also the 200 day moving average. So uh, I'm actually into a short position at, at, at that area um, where, we, where we're bouncing back to it again. But obviously, I'm hoping that the neckline holds as it would normally do or often do in a head and shoulders retest. And then down we go. A little moving average cross over there, the 50 crossing below the 100 uh, on the four hour chart, which is obviously a little uh, more negative, which works in my favor. The hourly chart, um, just showing you this because the price is trading below all the moving averages and we are getting negative uh, crossovers. So 50 crossing below the 100 and the 500. Now the 200 is crossing below the 500 hour moving average. So, you know, this is all. Uh, lending weight, adding pressure to the downside, I think, for the NASDAQ. Um, yeah, we closed below 16,000. The, week, the weekly close, as you know, is always more important than the daily close. It's where people are squaring up positions more than they would so at the end of the day. So um, as long as we close below 16,000, then the pressure should remain to the downside. I've just spotted what some people might term an inverse head and shoulders here. Look, um, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline would be something like this but don't be fooled this is a, a big mistake i don't know if you watch people's comments on social media technical comments this is absolutely not an inverse head and shoulders pattern here we go where are we i need to scrunch it up um because a head and shoulders pattern is only relevant an inverse head and shoulders pattern for, is only relevant after an extended uh, move to the downside. Now, I don't particularly think that this is a move to the downside, which is significant enough to warrant this being an inverse head and shoulders pattern. Um, it doesn't matter that the neckline is so steep. Uh, but anyway, I don't particularly think it, that this is the case. Uh, however, I do think that this bigger head and shoulders pattern is relevant because that is at the top of a sustained period of rising prices. So go back to the four hour chart. Here we go. So clearly, Nasdaq's well, been in a bull trend for a very long time. We know that when we look at the daily chart. Um, oops, what am I doing? There we go. Right. We know that when we look at the daily chart. We all know the Nasdaq's been in a bull trend for a heck of a long time. So seeing a head and shoulders pattern at the top of that, well, fair enough. That's more relevant. And look, it's not a big head and shoulders pattern on the daily chart. So we're not talking about an out and out crash, 30, 40, 50%. No, we're not. We're just looking for a correction to the downside um, that matches the height of the head and shoulders pattern. So um, it's, it's just a, it's just going to trigger a small correction. I don't get excited. I don't think this is the bursting of the bubble and the big crash. And don't forget, we do have that bearish engulfing candle. Now, let me just go to the weekly chart. Whoa, 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 weekly. Um, and we also have that bearish engulfing candle on the weekly chart, don't forget. So there are there are downside pressures here. Um, you, under, you, you see that? The, um, the new high the week before, the lower close, and not a great follow through to the downside, but we didn't recover in, enough to negate the bearish engulfing candle in the NASDAQ. So 
for all these reasons, I think we will go lower in the Nasdaq. Um, okay, there's not a huge amount more to say on, on yesterday because we didn't move much. It was kind of the first resistance levels that were holding. Um, Aussie yen does have some good support around 80 double O. So let's see if that holds. Um, Aussie dollar is also testing a good support level. So we'll see if that holds. So I, I am kind of looking for some more stability in the Forex markets. And obviously if the stock markets do out and out crash then and, and break this week's lows, then that should um, send traders into the dollar, into the yen, which is the usual sh safe haven. So then the, the Aussie and the Kiwi and uh, would, would continue lower. But for now, I think that the currency markets have a good chance anyway of stabilizing. Um, Euro, US dollar, that's working quite well. We had um, a, sh uh, a big resistance around in the mid 113 area. We're drifting off from there. Uh, what else can we talk about? Dollar CAD's got a great support level down at 127.20, but we bounced off that. We're retesting the high. Now, if, if you manage to jump into a long there, that obviously looks good. Now, I. We clearly are struggling at 128.35. I personally can't find a good reason for the market to be stalling here, but you know, markets do stall. Um, I can't see any decent trend line, moving average, um, Fibonacci. I can't see anything. We're not even that overbought on the daily chart. So I, I think shorts are too risky, even though we are holding that 128.35 area. I think if we're going to break anywhere, we're going to break higher. I'm still happy buying into weakness. I still think there is underlying strength in the US dollar. I still think there's underlying, uh, maybe not so much in the yen. Uh, yeah, I can't really add anything else. I didn't change the reports that much today because we did just didn't get that much action. We'll see what happens today. Uh, as always, any questions, any comments, please let me know. Otherwise, good luck if you're in the financial markets today. Have a great weekend. Relax, enjoy yourself, and we'll catch up again on Monday. Thanks very much.